So the Strath Poffo is a 24-hour race held in the middle of winter in the north of Scotland, just north of Inverness. 12.7 kilometer lap that the most you complete obviously wins. A little bit slippy and uh, you can do it as a quad, as a pair, or as a solo. Clearly, two of those are a fucking waste of time. So you may be asking what it takes to go from this to this in just a few short months. Well, first you need an instigator. There he is. We've got Jay. Now, if there's a man who talks about his e-bike more than this man, I do not want to meet him. Graham the silent assassin. The roadie has finally been shown the light. How would he cope with the tech? Stuart, a couple of years into his biking life, just had a baby, but managed to put the errors in. Bloody hard worker. And then Rich, one of my oldest and best mates. He forgoes training in lieu of his rock hard mental attitude. The question is, can he be broken? And finally, the two wee men, my pit crew. So to do the puffer, you need to do three things. Enjoy type two fun, dress like a bell end and train like a motherfucker. My training plan followed the zone two or Mafato method. Essentially 80% of my training rides were to be at a moderately low intensity. This supposedly has some positive physiological impacts, but for me it kept me from burning out and allowed me to get loads of volume in. My main target was hours in the saddle per week. This presented an opportunity for some epic adventures around this beautiful country. A chance to get to know these lads better and some weird side hobbies, like getting topless on a ride and sending videos to your mates. I ended up consistently getting 14 hours in the saddle every week. The only hiccups were when Finn went into hospital, we all got a 10 day flu and I had a little heart scare. Which brings me on to my excuses. My bike was a hardtail. Let's not mention one of the guys who beat me was on a fully rigid bike. I only slept two and a half hours the night before. And I don't think I ever fully processed 9-11. In any case, the training went well. I spent 165 hours in the saddle, 3,500 kilometers covered, and 60,000 meters climbed. And this is just one example of one of the epic rides I got to do. This one was solo, but not all of them were. We're gonna go on a really fun adventure. We're gonna go super fast on the ATV. We gotta go through that bit. That's a bit deep for Daddy. Daddy, let's go down that. Let's please help me go in it. <laughs> Daddy gets wet feet, it's Lockie's fault. Lockie's an absolute trickster. <laughs> if I get wet, I will go in it. I fall in your fault. It's a bad idea, Lockie. Oh well, we're in it. Oh, I got wet feet. Lockie, my feet are so wet. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, you trickster. You <laughs> On top of the training, you need tons of gear for puffer. A bike, a spare bike, spare wheels, loads of spares in a big silver box, loads more spares in a smaller sweet box, loads of tools that probably you're never going to use but you want just in case, loads of lights to keep you going through that 17 hours of darkness, and shed loads of food, plus all the tents. Oh, and then we have the clothes. So we've played about in this beautiful landscape for enough now. 
it's time for the race. We head to Strathpeffer to get everything set up and put all this gear to good use. So we were here, we were all set up, the pit was ready, everyone was ready, everyone was in good spirits, excited, and we were ready for the Le Mans start. This is when the heart rate really starts to rise and you get excited about this race. What an event. starts with a big fire road climb. Move on to the techie part of the course, some slippy slabs that are great fun to ride. Bloody steep climbs at 90 kilos. I do not appreciate 19%. The other boys are over 100 though, so they're really screwed. steep climbs followed by some rooty off camber muddiness that turned into an absolute bog at the end of the race so good on to the final descent what a view what a descent I may have had some technical issues with my six pound mark.
give in for the lap and uh, give it another go. Approaching our pits was always awesome, being cheered in by friendly faces, especially when Becky and my wife arrived. That was one of the best laps. What a great time. First lap in, it's going well. Any comments, Jay? Oh wait, he's not even fucking been on the track yet. Oh! So a few laps in and the weather started turning nasty just before nightfall. The boys were like metronomes, punching out consistent lap after lap. As we moved into the evening shift, my morale improved. As I turned on my lights, the memory came flooded back. My son Lockie was helping me prep my gear. He was playing with all my lights, and it turned out he adjusted them all into random modes. That gave me a laugh. I knew everyone else was starting to feel it. I climbed from 10th to 6th position and started making some progress. Four laps in. How you feeling, Jay? Like, I need to go to the toilet. I do not have this problem. I am like clockwork every lap. Right, there's your water bottle. We're, uh, Feeling good, I think. Thanks, Don't all. Bye. Well, it's ten o'clock. Halfway mark. Firework has gone off at ten. Uh, tired, but we're doing fine. We were getting just under an hour for the first few of those laps, but now we're getting just over an hour. We're thirteenth place, so let's aim for that top ten. Feeling good. Just another twelve hours to go. One of the worst things I could imagine about being in a pair is trying to stay warm after a cold lap. The boys seem to do all right in front of the fire. All of our clothes are still stinking. I had a bit of an issue around this time, probably about one in the morning, where my free hub broke about a third of the way into the lap. So I had to run about eight kilometers or the uphills for eight kilometers, uh, but managed to get home, fitted the new back wheel and was back on the road in no time. Jay, on the other hand, Update. It's currently 1.31. This is really difficult. But, so Stuvies, sitting in the car trying to warm up. Yeah, that's about as much fun as it is. Let's try and do another lap. So, longest and hardest uh, lap in. I was truly thinking to myself about insanity and the description and the meaning of it. What's the description? Doing the same thing repeatedly over and over and over again. Going for different results, but you get the same. That's what this fucking race is. It doesn't matter how dark it gets, it always gets light again. The boys were doing an amazing job. Rich and Stu had climbed up to ninth position. Jay and Graham were looking good for 21st. I'd moved up to 4th position with 3rd only 15 minutes up the road. A quick brake pad change and I was back out again, but it was just too much for me. What a last lap though, loved it. One last time. Pedal faster daddy. So this race lived up to all my internal hype. After an eight year sabbatical, I just loved it. Loved every minute of it. And to ride with these boys was an absolute privilege. What an event, can't wait for next year. I want to say thanks to everyone who helped this happen. People behind the scenes worked a lot harder than us and don't get to actually do the race. Thanks to Pamela, to Becky my wife, to my mum and dad and to Lindy for the support on site. And Sarah, Linda and Laura for all the support behind the scenes. Cheers everyone.